Hi, it's Dean Burry, and I'm back on the road of tracing Colville. Uh, back in 2019, I traveled to Europe to follow the path of Canadian war artist Alex Colville. That trip took me to most of mainland Europe, or the main part of Europe, and I ended up in Yorkshire in England, Toulon in the south of France, Nijmegen in Holland, and Bergen-Belsen in Germany. That really traced the the time that Alex Koble was actually in the war and during the war. In Yorkshire, he trained for a while with the Army Service Corps. Uh, he never actually set foot in the south of France in Toulon. He was there for um, in the back of a landing craft for the beginning of Operation Dragoon. He spent a lot of time in Nijmegen in Holland, near the bridge, a lot of fam famous paintings of the bridge there. And finally, he was one of two Canadian war artists who were brought to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp about two weeks after it was liberated. Now, I, the interesting thing is I've since now premiered the piece. The whole goal of the, originally of the Tracing Colville project was to go to those four locations to really take them in 75 years later, meld my experience with Alex Colville's experience, and to write an orchestral piece um, which reflected those things four 10-minute movements. And in fact, back in October of 2022, the Kingston Symphony premiered finally, after a full pandemic uh, of delays, they premiered Tracing Colville. It was a wonderful performance, a wonderful performance by the symphony and a fantastic experience. But I really found, and I think that again, if we talk about the positivity of the pandemic, is there was an opportunity to really reflect on what one was doing and projects such as this. And so even though there was a very short timeline originally for that project, a couple of years, um, the pand pandemic gave me the chance to realize that there's a much bigger project here. Um, and in fact, it's a much bigger reflection of my own career. As I mentioned back in some of those earlier videos, um, Alex Colville and I both went to Mount Allison University. A number of years apart, of course, he was there in 1942, uh, and uh, I was I graduated from Mount Allison in Sackville in uh, 1994. Um, also, <laughs> within this time frame, I had another opportunity to actually take a research trip down to the East Coast, uh, and I did post a video as well uh, from Mount Allison University. Went to Mount Allison, went to Acadia, which is where Colville went after he left. And uh, and again, all this is really informative. And I think that process of going to Mount Allison really showed my connection to the project. What's very interesting right now as well, as I should point out, you may hear the crickets and the cicadas that are happening here, the, the, the loud buzzing noise. This is something which I heard very much in Toulon in the south of France. And so that brings me to why I'm here in Italy. So back in 2019, it seemed unrealistic within the course of two weeks to be able to go to all of those locations and also fit Naples in as well. What happened on this part of Alex Colville's journey is that um, after his training in Yorkshire, which took place around the same time that the uh, Normandy invasion happened on June 6th, um, Colville was borrowed by the Navy. Basically, all of the Navy artists that were involved with the D-Day landings were in London finishing up their paintings, so they needed extra artists. So the, basically, the Navy asked if Alex Colville could be brought from the Army and brought to the Mediterranean for this portion of the war. So he traveled out of Cardiff. There's lots of journal entries of him kind of tra traveling down the Bay of Biscay through the Straits of Gibraltar and eventually to Naples. And what was happening in Naples in late July and early August 1944 was the assembly of the attack force and the practicing of Operation Dragoon, which was going to be the uh, invasion of the south of France on April, on sorry, August 15th, 1944, um, about six weeks after the D-Day landings in Normandy. So it was kind of like D-Day in the south of France. Colville was assigned to the HMS, um, HMCS Prince Henry, which was a transport ship. There was only two Canadian ships that were here, and there were some Canadian special forces. Now, this uh, part of Italy where I am right now, I'm in a place called Madragone, which is where we're staying, which is very close to a number of locations. Um, uh, but uh, and, and Canadians did a lot of battling, not far from here on Monte Cassino, that I'm going to be going to in a couple of days. But for Operation Dragoon, there was basically some Canadian special forces and two Canadian transports that were going to transport French commandos and other uh, um, soldiers, basically, for the invasion. So Colville traveled down on this ship. There was about two weeks of practice. Some of the very famous paintings that he did at the back of a landing craft um, were actually paintings that he did of the practicing that was happening. And what's really interesting is here along the coast in Madragone, 
I, uh, I was just able to go about five minutes from here, a walk down to the beaches where the Americans actually practiced those landings. The Canadians practiced them at some islands that are a little off the shore, um, but the Americans practiced the landings on the beach. I have a visitor here. I don't know if you can see Byron. Uh, <laughs> come here, Byron. <laughs> Byron is one of the dogs here at the Airbnb that we're staying at, uh, and he's a wonderful visitor and a nice kind of bit of relax relaxation along the way. So clearly he's interested in the Second World War as well. So I was able to be on the beaches, when, and there are actual pictures of the American landings on those beaches at Madrigoni. So this whole area is so filled with it. As I mentioned, the very famous Alex Coville, some of the oils, because Alex Coville, he created a lot of sketches that he would often then turn into watercolors, but a number of the moments that he thought were most important, he turned into full-scale oil paintings. Um, and that was reflective of these training uh, landings that happened just uh, off the couple kilometers offshore here on some of these islands. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, just before August 15th, the whole flotilla of ships traveled from here to Corsica and from Corsica to the Côte d'Azur in the south of France. And that's the point is where to uh, Coville, who kind of usually followed behind most of these battles. He wasn't there on the front line. He was an artist, obviously, not, uh, not carrying a rifle on the front line. Um, asked his commanding officer if he could actually be on one of these uh, landing crafts that were, were basically, and you know, if you've seen uh, Saving Private Ryan, you know the landings uh, of D-Day and how incredibly dangerous they were. Uh, it was a nighttime landing that basically happened that started Operation Dragoon, and also the, there was a sense that the German resistance was going to be a lot less. So in fact, the officer did say he could go at the back of this landing craft, uh, and, uh, and so that's uh, another famous kind of nighttime, which was one of the big inspirations to me for the second movement of my orchestral work uh, of the Côte d'Azur. Following the actual invasion, they came back here to Naples, and he was stuck here then for about three weeks. Um, uh, and basically just doing paintings, having some downtime. Uh, he talks about a number of things about going to the opera, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later, because today I'm actually going down to uh, Naples and we're going to the opera this evening. So far what we've been doing here, uh, two days ago we went to the Royal Palace of Caserta, which is about an hour from here. Um, and it has a lot of kind of significance to World War II as well. It became the uh, Allied headquarters in this area, the Supreme uh, Allied uh, Commanding Headquarters uh, of the Allied forces in Italy. Beautiful old um, palace, about 300 years old, um, but it was used as the headquarters. And also, uh, notably, it was used as a, uh, a hospital. There was American military hospitals there, also a Canadian military hospital. And Colville writes in his journal about traveling up there to meet a friend of his. Um, in Caserta. So there was an opportunity for us to see both the beautiful Baroque palace, um, uh, a, a palace that was also significant, quite significant in the Second World War, um, and also was the site of filming the Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a big Star Wars fan, so it was kind of exciting to see that as well. Yesterday I wanted to take the opportunity to get out on the water because, again, I think most Colville's most notable paintings from this time are actually from uh, the ship, basically uh, f um, paintings of Naples, Mount Vesuvius, obviously most notably, uh, and so I really wanted to try to get in the water. So we decided to go to Poshida, uh, which is a little island off the coast, probably about a half an hour ride, but it gave um, us the great opportunity to see um, to see Vesuvius from the water in the mist, which is very much along the lines of this painting that you can see here, uh, created by Alex Colville. Um, Procida is also a beautiful little island. It wasn't busy at all. We had some wonderful seafood there, which was lovely. So today we're heading into Naples itself uh, and a chance to kind of walk around the city, um, experience a little bit about what that was at that time. Obviously, during the Second World War, it was a very different place, uh, a very challenging place. By this point, uh, in, in early August 1944, the front line had moved quite far north, past Rome, up to the northern part of Italy. Um, so the fighting wasn't super close, uh, but the effects of the war still were. And so Naples was a city of desperation, of starvation, um, prostitution. There was a lot of uh, challenges and, and filled with allied soldiers, right, who obviously were spending money. Uh, so Colville talked quite a, little, a lot about, you know, going to the Orange Grove Club, um, getting gin, lemon squash, having, having, uh, uh, watching movies on the deck as well too, as I men mentioned, going to the opera, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so it was an interesting situation. And 
One of the big things that I'm taking away from this trip, I think, so far, is what the original Tracing Colville idea was, um, and the inspiration of writing a symphonic piece based on the idea of war art, because I felt war art was this contrast between the creation of art and the destruction of war. And I feel like Italy shows that to a T. I mean, there are so many ruins, ancient and kind of abandoned buildings as well in this area, in the south southern part of Italy, that it is so interesting to, um, to, to see that difference between this kind of beautiful art and things which have been left to kind of crumble as well, right? So it really, it really brings that home. Um, this video is going to go up to the end of kind of uh, our, our Naples time and the trip. We're planning on going to Pompeii, and then shortly after that, I'm going to be going to Monte Cassino and Rome, and so I'll cover those things in a different video. Uh, but I hope you're enjoying the continuation of Tracing Colville. Well, I just had the chance to see a performance of Anna Bolena by the Donizetti here at Teatro San Carlo uh, in Naples, which is the oldest continuing running opera house in the world. It was built in 1737, uh, has stopped a couple of times uh, performing, and one of them, of course, was during the Second World War. Um, the Allies obviously bombed uh, the theater when we were uh, coming, and uh, when the Allies were coming, and it essentially um, was shut down for a number of days, uh, or a number of months, really. But when the Allies took control of Naples again, within three weeks, the theater had been rebuilt and was offering opera again for Allied soldiers. And in August of 1944, Alex Colville actually came and saw a production of Tosca here at the opera. Um, he didn't love the first act, but he stuck it out, and he said it got better after that. Um, obviously, being in an opera house like this is incredible for someone like me as an opera composer. Uh, it's uh, it's wild. It's different than being in Canada, uh, and it kind of really you know takes me back as well. I would say more so than anything as well. When the lights went down, I could totally picture Allied servicemen and women watching the opera here. Uh, Again, it's uh, and knowing that Colville was in this building in August is pretty incredible. Uh, it's another wonderful trip along the tra trail of tracing Colville. See you again soon.